Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to Ehe, the reason you see. Me. This is how y'all could add value. This is how y'all could have ownership. This is how we could get in business. Yeah, I do music and I'm an artist, but we gonna start a label. And this is how Master P did it. This is how Cash Money did it. This is how Jay and them did it. So it was examples. And um, and he just wasn't saying like this how they did it. He had the details. He had books. He had look. This this is the split. This is the type of deal. This is who they did it with. And so you know he's lacing us and making us believe and giving us value. Like okay, shit. Yeah, we don't. We don't do music, but we can be in the music business and we can create a company. He formed the companies. He like, look, I incorporated this, and he had business cards, and you know, he had the vision for the for the um, the um, the markets that he wanted to, you know, go at. And he like, we gonna put posters up and we gonna sew up our area first. Wow. Hey man, listen man, uh, just really, 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 this your boy ECEO Boss Talk One Hundred One. I had to really, really think about this one right here, man, and watch the whole interview. Uh, Big Boy, man, killed this interview, man. I, I, He couldn't have did it no better. It was nothing that I seen that was done inappropriately. He waited to turn before he interviewed uh, Black Sam. Um, Black Sam is uh, one of the dudes that, I, you know, I befriended early on. I Before all the... All the hoopla and before losing Nip, you know, I went by there. I talked to Black Sam, talked about black business ownership, talked about entrepreneurship. Being that I own the store and still own the store to this day, I always uh, looked at it because my kids worked in my store. And I went up there and I'd seen the unity that his family had in their store, even though I had my store before them. I still would always value seeing blacks and come together in neighborhoods and stand for their neighborhood. My store has been standing in my neighborhood for 19 years now. But during the time when I met Black Sam and when I met Nipsey Hussle, I went, I actually met Nipsey in Vegas at the Palms Hotel. And I actually was giving him hell about his career at the time when he was, it was a, a period where, it, where he just wasn't dropping music and he was focused on business. And I was like, man, where the music? And I was giving him hell. And then after that, you know, he he meets this kid, and I think some things happen to where the and they talk about it on the interview as well. That that they when he meets the kid, uh, they start talking about doing a store, you know, digital digitizing the store. And I, I and my brother, make a long story short, my brother was like, man, you got to go tap in with him, just check on him. And and I went over to the Marathon store. To continuously year after year after year every time I would go up to Vegas every time it was magic every time it was time for me to go and do something with apparel I would always stop and check on them check on their store and it was just a, a thing to see their kids and their family working in the store together their dad working in the store and my family my kids working in my store and working with us and me and my wife and it was just a beautiful thing man so you know, I said that to say, man, this interview just was a phenomenal interview. I mean, when you look at, you know, everything that he was able to express, the key element for me was the fact that he brought out the point that uh, Jay Prince, uh, Cash Money, um, you know, these were staples in him building Master P. He showed this that the Southern influence influenced him. And I already knew that. Like I said, he tapped in with Mr. Lee down here and they doing blue laces and everything together, one and two. So I know he was, yeah, he was fun of the South. He would come to Dallas. Dallas was in a hoopla when he passed away. So this guy had ties with the South like nobody's business and he respected what was built down here and the way it was built so much that he studied and pretty much put himself in the game up on those principles. And I think a lot of times people, you know, like I said, the credit doesn't go where it needs to go. And at the end of the day, Black Sam just said it. He's telling you how they mastered the game. And I think they took it to a whole nother level. But I'm telling you right now, and they are way on the, on the West Coast, but heavily influenced by the South and the entrepreneurship of Jay Prince, entrepreneurship of Cash Money, Birdman and Slim, entrepreneurship of uh, Master P. You know, um, it just like I said, and, and it's just a dope thing to see, you know, how Black Sam finally comes out and tell you the details of what happened that day, how everything went, you know, and Big Boy was so poised, you know, and basically doing what he does. He's a master at it. He's been doing it for so many years. So 
when you look at what he does and who, what he represent on the West Coast, man, Big Boy is one of those guys I look up to being a Southerner and going up there and just always seeing the, the interviews and energy that he puts out. I've always been fond of, uh, of great energy. And that's what he display when you see him giving his interviews. Um, Big Boy, uh, just one of the dudes that, you know, when you when you think about the West Coast, you think about him, you know, Sway. These guys are phenomenal brothers that look like me that really kill the game when it come down to this, you know. Um, but like Sam, you know, he got uh, kind of, uh, you know, messed with him about that day as it would anybody when his brother passed away, you know, when he was killed, how he came. He details how he came to the store. He spoke on it slightly before, but when it first happened, but he really went into details and you could tell this wasn't an inter interview that that was easy for him, but you could tell him and uh, Big Boy and him have a history and they always respected each other. And that's the kind of energy you'll get when you have mutual respect for one another as businessmen. So like I said, Black Sam, me and Black Sam in the store, uh, we all, uh, like I said, I always would, I told him, hey man, I love what you guys doing. I always respected what they was doing. And that's the way I am. Um, I'm never gonna come with the bad energy. I'm always come with respectable energy. Um, and basically share, show love. Is there anything I can do to help you? That was my thing. When I first went up there and met them boys, my first initial setup was, what can I do to help you? If there's anything you need from me, I'm here. And this was before Nipsey died. Like I said, I met Nipsey, talked to Nipsey, um, about entrepreneurship when, uh, and about music. When I met him at, at the pump, we was there for magic. So that's how I started to, to home in on those guys during the time of their run and what they were doing in apparel when I was doing the same thing. A lot of the times I meet a lot of people at Pearl Show. Me and Sauce Walker met at the Pearl Show. Me and uh, Soldier Slim at the Pearl Show. Me and uh, Lloyd Banks, uh, me and Bun B, our first initial meet was at Magic. Uh, always respected these guys. They always see my grind. Um, and at the end of the day, man, I do it just to try to keep uh, people knowing that we can do it. We can make it. We can do whatever we put our hearts to. So I want you guys to go watch that Black Sam interview with Big Boy, man. I'm going to put the links in the description and you guys check it out and let me know what you think about it. Do you feel like, um, you know, Black Sam, uh, how did that interview look to you? Did it seem as if he gave you his all? I can't tell you. Like I said, he exposed the fact that they put, they got the game from those pioneers, those true pioneers, the ones who I always talk about because I know how it all happened and I know how it began. I know how much of an influence it was for us down here. So much so that it influenced others, even as Cameron has stated before. It's just cer certain things that, that, that happen. You can't control the narrative and, and nobody can taunt it. It's organic. And just dope to see how these young brothers and all these brothers that look alike have been able to formulate something to where we all can enjoy each other and see the, you know, the, the, the ending results of how it looks to become entrepreneurships as brothers together looking like one another. I think that's the dopest thing, man. So, man, make, make sure you, like I said, like, subscribe to the channel, get in the, get, go down and get in the comments. Let me know uh, what you thought about this interview, man. Like I said, I appreciate all you guys and make sure you watch it because I'm going to be dropping some dope, dope interviews this week, man. We've done so much work with so many people and I just uh, thank everybody for watching Boss Talk 101, man. And like I said, Black Sam, stay strong, man. I'm going to pull up on you. I'm going to figure it out. And we're going to chop it up again as usual. Um, like I said, I respect what you guys do on the West Coast. I'm a boy from South. I'm from the South. I'm down here in Texas, man. Hey, Texas made. But at the end of the day, man, we all look alike. We got to figure this out, man. Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E-He, the reason you see.